Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is halftime, and I can already tell you the Steelers are going to be 5-5-1 five, five, and one whenever this game's over. They're currently losing 31-3 to frickin three to the Cincinnati Bengals, and it's no disrespect to the Bengals. They're a great team. And if they would have ended up losing this game respect, you know, in a respectful manner, it would have sucked, but they, you know, I'd be able to survive. But, I mean, this is the closest thing to a must-win game they can get. I mean, they're 5-4-1 and one, losing this game, which they're going to, would put them at 5-5-1 five, five, and one. with the schedule that they have. This is kind of a game that they have to win to get momentum to carry into those games. But let me tell you, every single aspect about this team, other than Chris Boswell's kicking, is absolutely atrocious today. First off, we're going to start at the basis. This team did not come out ready to play whatsoever. Mike Tomlin didn't have this team ready to go. The defense wasn't ready to go. The offense wasn't ready to go. The play calling wasn't ready to go. Nothing about this team said that they were ready to go. When I watched that game, I saw nothing but just inconsistency, and that's at its best. Inconsistency at best, if not just absolute terrible play. You have people dropping passes. You have people, you know, Ben, he's he's playing pretty bad. He's playing pretty bad. And I still think he's the best option that this team has, or at least he's the most stable and best option that this team has for this year. But, man, he's just he's not anything better than a game manager, and today he's not even that. I mean, if the if there's one thing I'd blame this on, it'd be the execution. The execution of this team is just terrible right now. There's many variables, but I would place that as my number one, okay? We are dropping passes. We are not... We're not coming to play on defense. James Pierre is getting absolutely exposed and taken back to preschool, okay? James Pierre... I know it's his first year. I'm not going to say that he's a bust or anything, but he's certainly not playing well, especially today. I mean, Pierre's playing like crap. The only positive I can get out of this first half was Minka Fitzpatrick's interception, and even still, it didn't end up doing anything, but we'll get into that later. And just out of... Everything that I saw today, the execution has been terrible. They went out there, and they don't even look like they want to win. The coaching doesn't look like they want to win. The playing doesn't look like they want to win. The play calling doesn't look like they want to win. Nothing in the, about this game. I can draw t really no positive from what I'm seeing right now. This is the closest thing to a must-win game, and they're losing by 28 at half. I'd be, if they're losing at half to Cincinnati on the road, I'd be okay. But the way they're losing, in the, by the amount of points they're losing, it's just despicable, despicable, and it's not okay. All right, Mike Tomlin, I don't know why we do this, but almost every single game in the first quarter, we don't look ready to play. Sometimes, yeah, like against the Packers, for example, first drive, we get a touchdown. But other than that, first quarter looked like crap. Overall, our first quarters in almost every single game, we have not come ready to play, and the only time we have was against the Chicago Bears. Other than that, I can't I can't name you one game where in the first quarter we truly looked like a ready team to play football aside from the Bears game. I guess the Broncos game too when we're looking at it. But the Steelers, they had three wins in a row, and then they tied to the Lions, and they're going to lose to the Bengals, and they lost to the Chargers. I'll excuse the Chargers' loss. It was painful, but I'll excuse it. But if we just wanted to have tied the Lions... This loss would be, it'd still be bad, but when it comes to the record and the state of the team, it would be mo a little bit more okay. But now we're going to get into coaching. It's fourth and one. You're down by 21, I believe. I believe it was 24 to three. You're down by 21 when there's two minutes left. And you punt the Bengals the football. They did the same thing against the Browns in the wild card game last year. Less than five minutes left. They're down by, I believe, around 10 points. What do they do? They give the ball right back to Cleveland. What are you doing? Like, that's not going to do anything. And that's what they did to Cincinnati. And luckily, Minka Fitzpatrick was able to get an interception, but it just led straight to a pick six. Roethlisberger, on his very first play of the day, on his very first play on offense, he goes out there and he throws a pick. It's almost returned for a touchdown. But then the Bengals, the defense, hold him to the field goal. Good job. Now, what I will say about this team is their defense is underperforming severely right now as a whole. However, what I will say, the one thing that I will say is that this team, even though they're not showing it today, they're a defensive-minded football team. Their success is more dependent on their defense than their offense. So if the defense takes a little bit of a step down, then the offense has to take a little bit of a step up. But as long as the offense produces you know, to a decent level and the defense plays the way they typically do, not the way they are today, but the way they typically do, then that's the formula the Steelers need to win football games. And they're just not doing that. Okay. The offense looks like crap. The defense looks like crap as a whole. And it's just, it's just really bad. Like the coaching, the situational coaching is, is terrible. Why would you pump them that football? It's fourth and one. Okay. If you don't get it, I don't know what to tell you. If you don't get it first off, how, but if you don't get it, the Bengals, 
are going to get the football back anyways, and odds are you're going to get it. The odds are in your favor. Go for it. You're down by 21. You're down by 21. And if you miss it, the Bengals would get the ball at about midfield with two minutes to play. Maybe they get a field goal, but it'd still be better than what they end up getting anyways. And here is what really bothers me. James Pierre looked like crap. Joe Hayden's still not playing, okay? But even if Joe Hayden was playing, do you really think that would make up a 28-point deficit? Because if you do, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think you are doing okay because that's not going to impact this game by 28 points. Maybe 7, but not 28, okay? The Steelers would still lose this game if Joe Hayden was playing. I get it. They're not 100% at full strength, but they are super close, and you have to play through adversity. You have to go out there and show heart, and they don't show heart. They look like they don't care. They have a lack of effort, and they just they don't look, have any common sense to their game. The play calling is terrible. Najee Harris, he's a great running back, but the way Matt Canada uses him, we just run up the middle every single time on first and 10 in the inside zone. It's predictable, and that's why even though he's probably a top 10 running back when it comes to talent, just by strict, strictly pure talent in this league, we're 27th ranked rushing. Our defense was ranked 11th last month. They're ranked 23rd now, and I get last week's performance when a lot of starters were missing impacted that, but it's they're still on the decline. And this team, this defense overall, I can only say this season overall, not today. Today is going to make it tank, but overall, I would just say this is a slightly above average defense from what I've seen this year because they really they have not been consistent enough for me to call them an elite defense and today especially proves it they gave up 31 points the offense okay they gave up 24 excuse me the offense did not help them okay it'd be even worse if they didn't stop them after ben's first pick and hold them to a field goal but we're going to get into the minka fitzpatrick interception now burrow throws it it's picked off by minka now minka did did he get did he do anything dirty in that play no did he get the interception yes but what i will say is that TJ, after the play tj watt and joe burrow got into a little bit of a discrepancy and tj watt he was ba being way too rough with burrow after the play i think he should have i think watt should have been penalized for that and would have negated the interception however i'm still going to give minka fitzpatrick credit for this a because the refs did so i mean it's technically it's what stood it's what has standed in the game but second is because i mean He's made big plays this year. I mean, it's controversial whether or not Joe Hayden was offsides against the Packers. It's controversial, you know, well, not controversial, but Devin Bush took away an interception against the Lions in overtime, and he finally gets one now. So although I do think it should have been negated, I'm still glad to see Minka get the interception because I feel like throughout the season, he's had multiple opportunities to do so, and his teammates have robbed him, and some controversial calls have robbed him as well. And I'm not saying he's an playing amazing. He's not. I still think he's a very serviceable safety and he's above average, but I wouldn't say he's a top 100 player in the league right now. I wouldn't say he's a top five safety in the league right now. And I do think this is the worst season he's had with the Steelers so far. But I think overall throughout this year, he finally got his first turn turnover. And I think he deserves that because a lot of the plays, a lot of the game changing plays that he's had this year have been canceled out due to his teammates or just due to controversial play calling. So although, like I said, I think it should have been negated because I think they should have called called uh, a late flag on TJ Watt for just honestly being an idiot with Joe Burrow. I don't, I'm not, I, I, I think they should have called that. I think it should have negated the interception, but I'm glad that finally there's an interception for Minka Fitzpatrick and a play for Minka Fitzpatrick that stands because he finally got an interception and obviously it's not going to impact this game at all. But it's just nice to see because he's had he had multiple opportunities where he came in the clutch for our team, except it was called back, whether it's because of controversial calls by the referees or because of his own teammates. So just the fact that he has one interception that finally stands, even though it doesn't matter, for him, I'd call that a moral victory. And just as a Minka Fitzpatrick fan myself, obviously, because I stand him on Twitter, although it didn't impact the game and it just led to a pick six, I'm still happy for him because on the stat sheet, at this point, he probably should have one big play this year that stood, except both of them didn't. There are some more of them that, you know, silence, silence plays. There were kind of silence that were hushed down, but were still pretty good, you know, like against the Broncos, for example, came in clutch in that game, excuse me, no, the Browns, the Browns came in clutch on that play, you know, so he's had clutch moments and he's had some that have been taken back. So even though it's not going to affect the outcome of the game at all, and they're still playing like crap, I'm still happy to see it stand, although I don't think it should have, and it should have been negated by TJ Watt. And I hope that makes sense to all of you when, when I say that, because I obviously don't think it shouldn't have I don't think it should have stand. It should have been negated by Watts. However, I also am a firm believer that Minka Fitzpatrick has made big plays this year. They've just been called back due to his teammates or due to his um, 
or due to controversial calls. And he's also made some big plays that just weren't interceptions that have been exactly that big plays. So the fact that he finally gets an interception on the stat sheet, to me, you know, I I'm happy about that. But you know what that led to? Pick six. And by who other than Mike Hilton, you know? what He must be feeling great about himself right now because he threw a pick six off his former quarterback, and I'm honestly not surprised, okay? Even though we were down by 21 and we probably weren't going to score before the half, you know, maybe we go down the field and get a field goal or something. But even though we were down by 21 and probably we're just going to go into half down 24 to 3, we at least had something to build off of going into the second half. But that was completely demolished because of what... um what happened with Ben. Ben threw it and Mike Hilton jumped the pass and it was a very routine interception, something that an NFL defensive back is going to get almost every single time unless if they drop the ball for whatever reason. So And he caught it, so it's intercepted and he just continues to use that forward momentum into the end zone and touchdown. So the Steelers have done absolutely nothing. They need to get their crap together. They haven't done anything positive. The only player on this team that has came to play today is Chris Boswell and I obviously Minka Fitzpatrick. However, like I said, I'm I'm glad that it stood just for him personally because I feel like there were a lot of big plays from him that were interceptions or did result in scores that were called back due to controversial calls and or his teammates getting penalized for something on the play. But I do think it should have been called back by I do think they should have given TJ Watt a flag for that, which would would have negated the interception. But at the end of the day, I'm still happy that there's an interception on the stat sheet because he's done a lot this year to deserve an interception. But I just think in the fashion that it happened, not that Minka did anything wrong, but it should have been negated by Watt's penalty. However, I still count it, obviously, because A, it was counted, and B, he had other plays this year that his teammates screwed him over on or the refs made controversial calls on, which overturned. That were big plays that resulted in points or interceptions. So overall, I think he deserves it. But the Steelers, they need... I mean, they're going to lose this game, and I'll give you a post-game reaction, but odds are it's probably not going to be much different. I just want to see them play decent football. And if it looks like a closer game on paper, it's going to be because the Bengals are playing prevent defense. I can promise you that. They're going to be playing prevent defense. So if Ben all of a sudden marches down the field and scores touchdowns, that's why. But, I mean, this game is over. It's a team like Pittsburgh isn't going to come back down 28. I'm sorry. They have absolutely no momentum. They've been crushed on offense. They've been crushed on defense overall. And they've just... I know the offense hasn't helped them out, but the, the defense has still looked bad as a whole. And the play, situational play calling is terrible. The play calling in general is terrible. The execution is terrible. They look flat. They look like they don't care. They look like they're not ready to play. And this is, in, in my opinion, the biggest game of the season so far. And it's They can still make the playoffs with this loss, but it's the closest thing to a must-win game that you can have because this type of momentum going into the schedule that they're going to get with a, especially AFC North football, they still have to play the Browns and, and then they have to play the Ravens twice. And then they play the Chiefs and the Titans. All of those teams have a good chance of making the playoffs. Personally, I don't think the Browns will. That's just my opinion. I think their schedule is a little bit too tough and they'll end up just missing it. But that's also my, that's just my opinion. But they're still a playoff caliber football team. They're still a very good football team, especially on paper. So they they have a tough schedule. Not one game is easy. And even if it is an easy game, the Steelers always find a way to barely win, barely lose, or tie, right? If they just would, if they just would have beat the Lions, even if, if even that one thing would have changed, this loss wouldn't hurt as much, but it hurts this team so much. They have absolutely no momentum. They look like crap. They look uninspired and they look like they just don't care. Okay. If I, if I could, I could bring an 11 man. If any of you guys that are watching, if you had a family game of Turkey Bowl this Thanksgiving, if you put your team on the field, I think you'd be down 31-3 to right now as well. I wouldn't see a difference. And honestly, I think your play calling would be better. I think your situational common sense would be better. And I think you'd give it a little bit more of an effort than what the Pittsburgh Steelers are giving it today. This is abysmal. This is terrible. And I'm going to say it. This is the worst I've ever seen this team play. The absolute worst. The worst. Actually, never mind. I think this is tied. I think the way they played against the Browns in the first half, especially in that first quarter in the wild card game, it's tied with that performance so far. But they're both very bad. And the fact that I can think of a situation where this team might have played worse than what they are right now just shows me how inconsistent this team is and just how they're not ready for a truly big game. If they make the playoffs, cool. Because, I mean, it's either that or they don't make it and they still are good enough to the point where they get mediocre draft capital. But if they make the playoffs, they're not going to go anywhere. Look at the way they're playing, right? They're so uninspired. They're not a truly Super Bowl caliber team. 
even if they find a way to get in the playoffs, I'm here to tell you as an honest Steelers fan, they're not going to do it. So that's my, that's my first half reaction. This team is playing to an abysmal level right now. They look like they don't even care. They have no heart. They have no effort. They have terrible execution. The coaching's not helping them at all. The play calling's terrible. The defensive coverage is awful, except for Minka Fitzpatrick. He did, I think, overall, he's had a solid game. But I do think that should that play should have been negated by a penalty that wasn't thrown on T.J. Watt at the end of the, at the end of the play. But I'm still happy that he got the interception because I believe he's made big plays throughout this year. He's made plays that have resulted in points or interceptions that have been taken off the board due to controversial calls and or his teammates being penalized and negating the interception. So overall, even though it led to a pick six, I'm still glad that Minka Fitzpatrick finally has an interception that stands because I believe throughout the effort that he's put throughout this season. And yes, it's I still think this is the worst season he's had as a Steeler. But overall, I still think he is having a slightly above average season. And I still would say that I do think he deserved that interception, but it should have been negated. And I'll be here for the post-game reaction. It probably won't be much different than this one, but I'll still have a lot to say, and I'm very lucky that I'm calm right now because inside I want to punch a 4K TV and throw it out my window, and so are the days of our Steelers.